Good morning, guys. I am recording this uh, word, this voiceover at 414 in the morning (laughs) for such a time as this. Uh, God is funny, but I am recording this at 414 a.m. Um, And this word is titled, He Wrestled with God and Won. He wrestled with God and won. And most of you, just by that title, you already know, or even by the title on this thumbnail picture that I'm using for this word, uh, when Jacob is saying, I won't let you go until you bless me, right? We all can take this back to the story of Jacob wrestling with God which is found in Genesis um, 32, verses 22 through um, 22 through 32. Let's say 22 through 32. Uh, so Genesis 32, verses 22 through 32. A few weeks ago, the Lord gave me 811, in which he's given me 811 previously, and I'll get a little bit into that. But he gave me 811. What he showed was 811 to 118. So basically, 811 and then backwards, 811 backwards is 118. So the Lord gave me 811 to 118, as in to show 811 transformed into 118, right? So I was like, okay, what does that mean? Of course, I knew 811 and the Strong's Greeks Concordance, which is all biblical. Um, And you can look this up yourself using several resources. Uh, I like using Bible Hub, which is an online platform. Um, But it's the Strong's Greeks Concordance. And the Lord actually gave me 811 back in 2020 or 2021. I believe it was 2021. And 811 is actually the address of my ex-husband, who's a prodigal. And I don't call him a prodigal because he broke up our marriage. I have nothing to do with it. But he's a prodigal because he chooses wasteful living over living according to God's will for his life. That's what a prodigal is. It has nothing to do with a person who leaves a marriage. Uh, believe it or not. (laughs) And I know a lot of prophetic voices, when you see prodigals in the title, people automatically think of a husband who left his wife. That is wrong. A prodigal, just like the prodigal son, is any way anybody that walks away from their father, as in the Lord God, and chooses to exhibit wasteful living, living for this world, living outside of the will of God over being one with their father over being in their father's will, as in God's will. That's what a prodigal is. So again, the Lord gave me 811 back in 2020 or 2021. That's my ex-husband's address. His address starts with, it's 811, then it goes into the street name, right? God is very strategic. So back then the Lord called him a person who lives like a prodigal. Literally. And again, address 811, right? And so I already knew what 811 meant. The word is asatos, A-S-O-T-O-S, asatos, in the Strong's Greeks Concordance. And again, that translates to prodigal living, wasteful living, right? So a few weeks ago, the Lord said 811, transformed to 118. So I looked up 118 in the Strong's Greeks Concordance, and it means to contend, to wrestle with, right? To contend, to wrestle with. And the Lord brought me to the story of Jacob. Now I'm going to read the verses to you um, because then it would make so much more sense. But what the Lord is saying by this word is that many prodigals, whether man or woman, They're wrestling with God and winning. They're wrestling with God and winning. And it's correlating to the story of Jacob. But I'm going to read it first before I explain that more. 
So Genesis 32 verses 22 through 32. It says that night Jacob got up and I'm reading from the NIV version. That night, Jacob got up and took his two wives and his female servants and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all of his possessions. Catch that guy spiritually. He sent over all of his possessions. So basically, it was just him with nothing, right? Catch that spiritually. So Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched and he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Some versions say, I will not let you go until you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob answered, Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, it is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was, in, he was limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of the hip because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon. That was Genesis 32 verses 22 through 32, the NIV version. Jacob sent his wife and his kids and his possessions, everything ahead of him. He was left with nothing. And many versions are... It's they're a bit different because they say it shows it speaks as if he's wrestling with an angel or an angelic being. Um, but that angelic being, of course, is translated to the Lord God that he's wrestling with, right? And these uh sets of verses, it's not saying that Jacob actually wrestled like a physical wrestling with God. It's a symbolic representation of his struggle with God, his own identity, and his past actions. While Jacob physically wrestled with God, it's important to note that he did not, quote unquote, win because nobody can beat God, right? So he didn't win in a conventional sense. Instead, he persevered and demonstrated his determination and faithfulness. The encounter ultimately leads Jacob to receiving a blessing and a new identity. Catch this, guys. It leads to Jacob receiving a blessing and a new identity, signifying a transformative spiritual experience, a transformative spiritual encounter, rather than a victory in a literal wrestling match. So, again, keep in mind, you can't wrestle with God and win. He's God. Remember in this sets, these sets of verses, Jacob acknowledges that he came face to face with God and his life was spared. So he was aware that he couldn't actually wrestle with God and win. Instead, it's showing he persevered and demonstrated his determination and faithfulness. It led to him receiving a blessing and a new identity in Christ. He was transformed spiritually. He was transformed spiritually. What God is saying from 811, he's saying from a prodigal that chooses to walk outside of his will, that chooses to do their own thing, that chooses to exhibit wasteful living. So from 811 to 118, again, 118 in the Strong's Greek's concordance means to wrestle with, to contend. And the Lord brought me to the story of Jacob. The word is athleo, athleo. It also um, symbolizes to engage, to compete in a contest, but it's to wrestle, to contend. Okay, so the Lord is saying from 811, prodigal living, to 118, contending, wrestling with God and winning. 
getting a transformation spiritually, getting a new identity in Christ, getting blessed because they they know who God is and they're they're choosing not to let go of his hand until he blesses them. You can't live in this life without God's blessing upon your life, without his hand upon your life. So there's going to be so many prodigals that are coming back to God. Stay in prayer, stay and cover them as God leads you, whether it is a husband, a wife, a brother, a sister, a mother, a father, a cousin, an auntie, an uncle, whoever that prodigal is in your life that God has you standing for. It may even be yourself. But God is saying there's a wrestling with him in a winning as in a spiritual transformation to where this person will be blessed and receive a new identity. Jacob means trickster, right? That's one of the meanings of tricksters, uh, of Jacob, I'm sorry. One of the meanings of Jacob, and bear with me, it's it's after four in the morning. There's um, Jacob means trickster, one who takes the place of another. And we know why he has the name Jacob. He he tricked his brother out of his own birthright, right? <laughs> he came out grabbing a heel, okay? So Jacob means trickster, but Israel means one who wrestles with God. And what did he do? He wrestled with God and he won. He got a blessing and a new identity because he chose not to give up. He wouldn't let go until God blessed him. Nobody can live in this life without God blessing their life, without God putting his hand upon their life. That is the blessing. When God's hand is upon your life, nothing, nothing can harm you. You may go through battles. You may go through things. Satan will attack you. But when God's hand is upon your life, there is nothing Satan can do to you without God allowing him. And even if he allows it, God is a firm foundation. You will not falter. You will not fall. You will not crack because God is the foundation. When God takes his hands off of you, Jacob knew better. He said, I won't let you go until you bless me. Jacob knew better. When God takes his hands off of you, that's a dangerous place to be. And a lot of prodigals will experience God removing his hand because just like Jacob, they need God needs them to let go of the possessions, to send those possessions ahead to where they're alone and it's just them, similar to the prodigal son. He exhibited prodigal living. He wasted everything. So at the end of the day, he was alone with nothing. Y'all better catch this. And he realized who his father was and he ran back home. His father came out to greet him and ran to him. Like he, he realized who his father was. And that's what prodigals are doing, realizing who their father God is and that you can't live this life without them. You can have the money, the possessions, the things. The prodigal son, he was given all of his inheritance. He was given everything. And just as quick as he got it was as quick as he wasted it. It will not last. It's just things. It's material. But God's love is eternal. God is everlasting. When we choose him, we have eternal life. It doesn't go anywhere like there's no ending. But to the things of this world, everything must come to an end. So God is saying from 811 prodigal living to 118 wrestling with God in winning. It's a spiritual transformation. It's a name change. It's a blessing that's being bestowed. Keep praying for these people because 2024, you're going to see that shift from prodigal to wrestling with God and being transformed, to wrestling with God and getting a new identity that other people don't even recognize because they never thought that this person would change out of their prodigal ways. That is the same way of my ex-husband. I'm pretty sure his family members don't think he's ever going to change because he's been this way his whole entire life. And the funny thing is when the Lord first gave me the number 811 and I was reading about Jacob and him limping because of his hip, my ex-husband limps sometimes because his hip gives him problems. So I thought God was so hilarious when he showed me that. Like my ex-husband literally will limp sometimes because his hip, I believe he had like an injury when he played basketball. He used to play basketball and um, he limps sometimes when his hip is paining him. So I thought that was so funny. Not even to say again, his address is 811. (laughs) 811. 
So God is saying from 811 to 118, they're wrestling with God in winning. And there's a transformation. There's a blessing. There's a name change. And this is why God has people like you, like me, stand in the gap for other people, for prodigals. Because a lot of their families, although they say, I'm a woman of God, I'm a man of God, I'm Christian this, I'm Christian that, their family members are suffering right around them and they're not standing in the gap for them. They're not doing it. So God will use other people like you and me to stand in the gap for these people that he's allowed us to be divinely connected with. He allowed me to be divinely connected with my ex-husband. We said, I do. We were married. God says two become one, right? So you become a help meet for that person. So God allowed me to be divinely connected with this person because although his mom is a, she calls herself an evangelist, he has prophetic people in his family. Nobody's standing in the gap for him. Otherwise, he wouldn't still be the same person. So God will call those who are willing to fight for souls to be saved, not fight for anything else. I'm not fighting because, oh, I want my husband back and all this. No, I'm not fighting for that, but fighting for souls to be saved, for them to come back to God as their first husband. He is the bridegroom. So the fight is for them to come back to him, to be reconciled to him, not to be reconciled to me or you. Once they wrestle with God and win and they're, they're no longer prodigals and they, their, their life is in alignment with God's will for their lives, everything else will fall in place. I'm definitely not, I don't pray for my ex-husband because, oh, I want him back and all these, <laughs> no. But at the end of the day, I don't want him to perish. I don't want anybody to perish, any of my prodigal family members to perish. I want all of them to receive a blessing and a new identity and a spiritual transformation from God because they wrestled with God in one. I won't let you go until you bless me. So that is the word, guys. Um, I love you. I know it's early in the morning, um, but it's okay. I've been up since two. <laughs> I've been up since two, um, but I love y'all. I, I pray that this blesses whoever it's for, and we'll talk soon, guys. Bye.